If you're fairly new to cameras and photography, then there's a good chance you've been shooting in the auto mode. Now this is a mode you will find in most cameras, but not the professional cameras, because of course, if you're a professional photographer, you don't need to rely on auto because you know how to use the camera and how to get the most from it. But there's another camera mode that is perfect for beginners that you will find in all cameras, including the professional cameras. And this is called the program mode. Now in this video, I want to explain to you what it is and how you can use it to take better photos. Welcome to the Photo Genius channel. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I post regular photography tutorials. I like sharing tips, tricks, occasionally doing gear reviews as well. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Now when taking pictures, I'm mostly gonna be shooting in the manual mode. I'm a big fan of manual, and I would say about 90% of the time, that's the camera mode I like to use. When I'm not shooting manual, I'm taking advantage of either the shutter priority, aperture priority, or occasionally using the program mode, which of course is what this video is all about. Now program mode is P on your camera's mode dial, and in this video, I'm now gonna to explain to you what it is, what it does, and how you can use it to take better photos. So sit back and enjoy the video. So what exactly is the program mode? Well, I like to describe this mode as being like auto, but with benefits. Now, what I mean by that is just like auto, if you put your camera in the program mode, your camera's gonna do most of the hard work for you. But unlike auto, it's going to unlock some camera features. Now, this is great because the benefit of this is you now have more control over your camera. And this allows you to start being more creative with your photography. Now, one of the many things that you can do in the program mode that you certainly can't do in auto is to adjust something called exposure compensation. Now, when you take a picture, there's three things that affect how bright or dark that image is, and these are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Now, in auto, you don't need to worry about those. The camera looks after those for you. And in the program mode, the camera again looks after these for you, but using exposure compensation, we can adjust these. Now what that will do is allow us to make our picture brighter or darker. So this means you can now get the results that you want, not necessarily what the camera just gives you. It's a really cool feature. Let me show you how it works. Take a look at the back of this Canon camera and on the LCD screen, you should see the light evaluation meter. Now this is a scale that indicates the level of exposure when you take a picture or how bright or dark your image will be. Here's how it looks on the back of a Nikon camera. The meter is simply a scale with zero in the middle representing a balanced exposure, the plus side for overexposure and the minus side for underexposure. Now a marker on the scale indicates how bright or dark our image will be. This for example is one stop overexposed, but this is two stops underexposed. And this of course means we should get a balanced exposure. Now for this example, the camera is in the manual mode. To avoid underexposing as shown on the meter, we can adjust the camera settings until the light levels are balanced. Now, of course, this video is all about program mode. Switch to program mode and the camera does this for you. But using exposure compensation, you can adjust the exposure levels if you wish to give you the results you want. To demonstrate how this works, a couple of days ago I was taking photos of pelicans in the afternoon sunshine. With the camera in the program mode, I was getting some good shots, but was noticing some slight overexposure. By holding down the exposure compensation button and turning the dial on the camera, I was able to select an underexposure of two thirds of a stop and get the images I wanted. Now, if you've used your camera mostly in the auto mode, you're probably going to be used to the camera doing this, popping the flash up. This can seem quite random and can be quite annoying. There's a place for flash, don't get me wrong, it can be useful at times, but it can also give terrible results, particularly if you're photographing a subject that is very reflective um, or light colored or glass, for example. Now, when your camera's in the program mode, the flash, 
will no longer pop up automatically because it's your choice. Again, program gives you benefits and these benefits are options. So you can use the flash if you want to, but equally you can turn the flash completely off. Now, not only that, but depending on what camera you have, you may also be able to adjust how bright the flash is. So you might want to use the flash, but you might want to just turn the intensity down. And you can do this by using something called flash compensation. Let me show you. To pop up the flash on a Canon camera, there's usually a button on the top. You'll find this on the back of most Nikon cameras. If you have a Nikon camera using the I button, you can select flash compensation. Press the OK button and then use the up and down buttons to either increase or decrease flash compensation, which in turn will affect how bright or dark the flash is when it fires. Now for this to work, make sure you check the settings in the camera menu. You want flash control for built-in flash to be set to TTL or this will not work. So now let's talk about focus. Now in the auto mode, your camera is simply making all the choices for you. And one of those choices includes where and on what the camera is going to focus. Now this is far from ideal. You should be able to do this. And of course, Program mode gives us options and one of those options is now you can tell the camera where your subject is and where you want the camera to focus. Now this is actually pretty easy to do and I'm going to demonstrate this for you on this Canon camera. Now if you've got a Nikon camera don't worry I've got a demonstration for you but it's at the end of the video so make sure you stick around. To change focus points on a Canon camera is pretty straightforward. Look for this icon on the back of the camera. Press the button, then simply turn the dial on the top of the camera and you can now select your focus points individually. When taking pictures of animals, but also if doing portraits of people, make sure you select the focus point that falls on the eye so you get the eyes nice and sharp and in focus. Next up, I want to talk about something called picture styles or picture control, depending on which camera you have. Now, this is a feature of the camera that will affect the colors and the tones of your images. Now there's usually a few presets here. Landscape will boost greens and blues. The portrait option will give you better and more natural looking skin tones. And here you will also find a mode called monochrome. Now monochrome allows you to shoot in black and white. And I absolutely love black and white photography. So this again is a really cool feature that isn't available in auto. Let me show you how you can have fun with this. If you're using a Nikon camera, using the I button, find and select picture control. Most popular options here are vivid, monochrome, plus we have a portrait and landscape option. My personal favorites are vivid for vibrant saturated colors, and of course, monochrome for black and white. Using the Q button on a Canon camera, you can select picture styles for similar options, including portrait mode, landscape, plus of course monochrome to shoot classic black and white images. Okay, next up I want to talk about ISO or ISO, depending on which one you prefer. This is a way of controlling light. Again, in auto you have no control over this at all, so the camera looks after it for you, but I think it's really important that you can control this one, and you can in program. Let me show you. Canon make this really easy with a dedicated ISO button on the back of the camera, enabling you to increase or decrease the ISO. If you have a Nikon camera, simply press the I button from the menu, select ISO and OK, and you can now adjust and change the ISO. Press OK to set. Now, if your Nikon camera has a function button on the side, hold that down with your left hand, and with your right hand, turn the wheel on the back of the camera to instantly change ISO. This is a great shortcut. So now let's talk about white balance. Now this is not to be confused with picture styles because it also affects colors. But the goal usually with white balance is realistic looking colors. Pressing the WB button on the back of your Canon camera will give you white balance options, including the default automatic white balance, options for natural light, including sunny day, shade and cloudy, plus settings for artificial light, flash, and even custom settings to select, all you've got to do is choose, press OK, and it's done. 
And as you may have guessed, pressing the I button on the back of the Nikon allows us to select white balance options, including auto, options for artificial light as well as natural daylight and preset manual options as well. Press in OK to select. It's really important to select the correct white balance settings for your image as it can cause havoc with colors and really affect skin tones as you can see in this example. If you're feeling unsure about white balance rather than risk it, leave it in the automatic white balance setting. Now my number one white balance tip, if you like taking photos at sunrise and sunset, set your white balance to cloudy. This should give you more realistic looking and warmer colors. Now, if you're a Nikon user, don't go away because I did promise you that I'm going to show you how to control the focus points on your camera. If you're a non-Nikon user, then you guys are excused. You can go if you want to, but before you do, please consider giving this video a thumbs up because it really does help support this channel. And also consider subscribing if you want to learn more. I'm hoping that in this video, you've discovered program mode and how it can give you more control over your camera so you can be creative and take better photos. Okay, Nikon crew, it's over to you. On the LCD screen, we see the focus points are currently set to auto. To change this, press the I button and select AF area mode and choose single point autofocus. And once done, you can then use the multi-selector tool on the back of the camera to select the focus points individually. Now by using the different focus points, we can select what we want the camera to focus on within our frame. Now, did you know that I've made over 150 tutorial videos that you can watch for free anytime here on YouTube? I've made loads about Nikon cameras. I've even created a playlist just for the Nikon tutorials, and I've put a link in the description below this video. So if you've enjoyed this video and you're keen to learn more, please consider subscribing to the channel. I want to say a big thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up because it does help support. And I hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.